We've now talked a lot about the demand curve and consumer surplus. Now let's look at the other side. Let's think about the supply curve. And you could imagine that there might be something called the producer surplus. So that, let's say this is the price axis. This is the quantity axis. And let's say that we are running, let's say we are running some type of a berry farm. And this is our supply curve. That is the supply, supply curve. And this is our demand curve. So that is demand. And just like we did with the supply curve, for the demand curve now, instead of thinking of a price and thinking about how much quantity would be supplied, let's think about a given quantity and think about what the price would have to be in order for the producers to produce that quantity. And so let's say that this quantity right over here, this is in thousands, thousands of pounds of berries. Thousands of pounds. So this is 1,000 pounds, 2,000 pounds, 3,000 pounds, 4,000 pounds, and 5,000 pounds. And let's say that this price right over here is $1 per pound, $2, $3, $4. I could do that a little bit more even. So this is $3, this is $4, this is $5 per pound. And this is, let me write this, this is all in per pound. Per pound. So let's say that we, we want the suppliers to produce 1,000 pounds of berries. So this is, we want them to produce 1,000 pounds of berries. What does the price have to be for them to produce 1,000 pounds of berries? Well, think of it from the suppliers or from the berry farmer's point of view. If they're going to produce 1,000 pounds of berries, in order for them to produce it, in order to convince them to produce it, they have to get at, le at, at, at minimum as much as they would get using those same resources to produce something else. So if they could get, if they could get a dollar per pound, or the equivalent in dollars of, of a dollar per pound for those first 1,000 pounds, so about $1,000, if they could get that to, by producing their land for an apple orchard or for using it to, to graze or maybe renting out the land to someone else, that's the minimum you would have to pay them. Because if you paid them less than that, then they would go do the other thing. They would go and they would go and, 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 and rent their land out, or they would allow their land for grazing. So you would have to pay them you would have to pay them the opportunity cost for them producing those 1,000 pounds. So the opportunity cost for them producing those 1,000 pounds would be right over there. And this is on average the first 1,000 pounds. You could also think in that very first pound, the opportunity cost would be right over there. Then the next pound would be right after that. The, the 500th pound would be there. The 1,000th pound would right be there. Or you could say the first 1,000 pounds on average would be right over there. Now, let's say that we wanted them to produce another 1,000 pounds. So we want the whole market or this entire farm to produce, or maybe it's multiple farms, to produce a total of 2,000 pounds. What would we have to do? Well, same exact thing. We're, we're kind of assuming that maybe the market is already producing that first 1,000 pounds. So now we would have to think about, well, what are they giving up to produce that next 1,000 pounds? And now we would assume that, they, that for that first 1,000 pounds, they would have used the land and the inputs that are most suitable. So this is the most suitable, most suitable resources. Most suitable resources. So we're talking about the labor that really knows how to grow berries, the land where berries are best grown, and maybe they're really close to transportation networks, so it's much cheaper to produce and ship from there. But now, if we want another 2,000 pounds of berries in this time period, and maybe this is over, you know, this is per year over here, if we want another thousand pounds, they're now going to have slightly less suitable resources. Maybe the land that's far, slightly further away from transportation resources. They're now going to have labor that is slightly less efficient. They're going to have to take land away from that might have been slightly more suitable for other things. So now the opportunity cost for these growers for the next thousand pounds is going to be slightly higher. So their opportunity cost is going to be like that, on average, for the next thousand pounds. You could say the opportunity cost for the one thousand and first pound will be right over there. And for the 2,000th pound would be right over there. But on average, for the 2,000 pounds, this is their opportunity cost. Now, same thing. The next 1,000 pounds after that. If we want to get the market, if we want the whole supply to be 3,000 pounds, they would have to produce, they would have to get that, their opportunity cost of that incremental 1,000 pounds. That opportunity cost of that incremental 1,000 pounds. And so viewed as it this way, 
the supply curve no longer, and it is the same exact curve. Before we used to say, oh, if we want to, if we want to, if how much would people produce if the price were three dollars? And you'd say, oh, they'd produce three thousand pounds. Now we're looking at it the other way. We're we're saying. If we want the suppliers to produce 3,000 pounds, what would the price actually have to be? Now, with that out of the way, now we can think about the supply curve as really our opportunity cost curve for the suppliers. And let's say that this is the supply and the demand, and then this would be the actual price at which supply equals demand right over there. And so let's just say that that is the market price. So what's going on over here? All of the suppliers. So this, the price here. Let's just for making the math simple. Let's just say that the price here is four dollars, and the quantity demanded and the quantity supplied here is four thousand pounds. What's going on here? This, the very four thousandth pound that produced by the suppliers, the opportunity cost for them to produce it would be four dollars, and they're going to get four dollars exactly for it. So they're right on the fence. But for the the, the first three thousand nine hundred and ninety ninth pounds. The opportunity cost of producing it was lower than the price they're getting. So in this situation, the producers are getting more the, for the first 3,999 pounds. They're getting more for their berries than their opportunity cost. And just like we talked about consumer surplus, this is the producer surplus. So for example, for these first thousand pounds, for these first thousand pounds right here. The producers, their opportunity cost was a little over a dollar a pound, but they're getting four dollars a pound for it. For the next thousand pounds, the opportunity cost is approaching two dollars a pound. It's like a dollar seventy-five, just eyeballing it. But once again, they're getting four dollars a pound for it. So they're getting this surplus. And so if you think about the entire market, the producers as a whole, they're getting this entire area. This entire area represents the excess value that they're getting above and beyond their opportunity cost, and we call this right over here the producer surplus. Producer surplus, and since we're assuming, or we will assume, a linear supply curve right over here, this is just a triangle finding an area of a triangle. This this length right on this side is just four minus one. It's just three three dollars per pound. And then this length right over here is four thousand pounds. Four thousand pounds. So to find the producer surplus, we're just finding the area of this region. So the, let me write this: the producer surplus here is just going to be. I'll use the same colors. Three times. I wanted to use that pink. Three, three times the four thousand. Times the four thousand, and that would give us the area of this entire rectangle. So we have to divide it by two. Or that if this is just defining the area of a triangle. So times one half, the same thing as dividing by two, and so this gives us one half times four thousand is two thousand times three is six thousand. And you can look at the units. It's six thousand, or it's three dollars per pound times thousands of pounds per week. So we end up with so the we end up with six thousand dollars of producer surplus per. Per week.